Right, Joe 200. This is a big week, and uh, it's just all part of the program when we have this compressed semester into six weeks during our, our summer semester. So, um, so it's all about um, uh, economics and financing this week, and so we're going to be going in and to look at the individual choices that have to be made to make sure that you finance your retirement appropriately. You finance old age appropriately. So we kind of last uh, last time we got together, my last lecture, we went over kind of the economic consideration at a more sociological and and and, and kind of global versus national level. And we uh, and I gave kind of hints into, to some of the individual things uh, in terms of financial burden and things like that. But we were really looking at more societal things about the cost of older people in a society, um, what it does to labor markets, what it does to productivity and things like that. Okay, So now um, um, we're going to be uh, jumping into the individual preparation. Okay, And that's what this is all about right here. Okay, So I'll be sticking my lecture right in here. OK, um, we're going to be going back to this really amazing publication. There's two ways of doing this. OK, so we know we're going to go to page 50 or 57. So for your own purposes, you can go into this reader. I'm going to go into that right now. I clicked on it, right? So, okay. And so we're going to go here, and we're going to get to the table of contents. And uh, so um, <clears throat> this is where I would want you to start. So you just click on it, and, and it takes you to this concept of uh, retirement income. All right. So then you, you know, can read this way, like you're flipping a book, and that's the concept of this, okay? Um, and... Um, and you go like this all the way through here, and that's where you end right there at page 64, okay? Um, now, for me to kind of like just guide you a little bit, um, it's better for me to go ahead and access the PDF file. Um, so I'm going to get out of here, okay? And I'll be accessing the PDF file right up here. Sorry, right there, okay? Um, and then we're going to get into discussion, these individual choices, but also individual financial challenges, okay? So I want you to become much more familiar with the Social Security system. That's what this is all about right here, okay? Um, the, um, the cost, okay, of, of medical care. And while Medicare is this amazing social um, health insurance kind of umbrella policy that covers everything from doctor's visits to hospitalization and to drugs, it is not perfect, okay? And there are still um, many things that, that, um, that you have to pay for out of pocket and uh, with declining income um, and increased medical costs, that's what this is all about. So we'll get into this in a second. So it's something that I want you to kind of consider when you're doing your discussion. In fact, it is something I definitely want you to consider when you're doing your discussion. All right, so let's get into here. All right, so we're going to click on to this. So you can see my wheels spinning there, and there we go. All right, so I'm going to increase the size of this, okay, and basically I need to go find my chapter now. Okay, so we can go back up here to remind ourselves where we're going with this, okay, um, and, do, 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 do. and there it is right there. Next, sorry. So we're going to uh, page 50, all right? All right, so I'm going to scroll down and page, find page 50. Okay, and... Okay, and let's see where we're at here. I am... Ah, I can't see it because I got it too big, sorry. We're at page 31, sorry. All right, so I reduce it. Okay, so we've gone through a lot of these things. Okay, economic... Preparation for retirement. This is where we're at right now. Okay. Now I'm going to make it bigger so we can see it a little bit better. Thank you. Okay. Alrighty. So we're looking at individual households. Okay. And do you have sufficient economic resources to maintain your life or maybe even improve your lifestyle from where you were at during your working years? Okay. So as we're doing this, um, it's kind of a feasibility study, all right? And so um, this is a, 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 um, an area that financial planners, money managers, are very, very crucial for a lot of people. Now, um, many of you will not need 
to have a financial planner because you can do this on your own. You can make your own predictions. You can do your own investing. Okay, but this is kind of what this is all about. Okay, are you prepared adequately? All right. So um, we'll look at the sources of income. Okay, Social Security is an insurance policy. Okay, it is both a um, a uh, financial insurance policy for the individual to finance their living expenses as they get older. It is also um, a, a, a death benefit, okay? So this is uh, something that um, if I were to die, um, it would finance um, uh, my children until they are adults, and also uh, it would finance my wife if her Social Security income is less than mine, or maybe she doesn't have any, okay? So... Um, that is an important aspect of Social Security, okay? So it is life insurance in a way, okay? All right, so then we'll talk about uh, um, different types of pensions, okay? Um, these are dinosaurs, and they are disappearing, okay? This is guaranteed income, um, and what has been replaced by is what's called defined contribution, and this is the um, where you take your own money and you, um, you invest it into... Um, what are called tax deferred accounts. And this means I defer paying taxes on it until I actually spend the money. We're gonna learn all about these um, in the last lecture uh, about retirement planning in the class, okay? It's better to do that because um, uh, as you get older, you're less likely to spend as much money, okay? And so as a result, um, your taxable income will, will actually be reduced because your income is, is dependent on how much you're spending, okay? All right, um, so then we're going to go into, um, you know, why people save, you know, um, what factors of, uh, affect your retirement security, all right? Okay, so we get into this right here, okay? Um, and, you know, what do we have at our disposal, okay? So um, this talks a little bit about Pension programs, okay, personal financial literacy, things like that. Um, you know, pensions are what are provided by governments. Um, uh, private corporations, private industry have pretty much eliminated pensions for the most part. Okay, I have a friend that, that does work for a company that does provide a pension. USC does not provide a pension. Okay, again, that's a guaranteed income stream. Corporations were going broke. Okay, because they didn't anticipate how long people were going to live. All right, um, if you guarantee um, a hundred thousand dollars a year to somebody as a pension, and they live for thirty years, you can see the consequences that, that has. Okay, so firemen get pensions, police officers get pensions, uh, con congressmen get pensions, the president gets a pension. Okay, any city workers get pensions. Um, pensions are provided by water resource boards. Uh, to company, if you work for a water resource board, um, um, electrical companies that are uh, that are not to private. Okay, so the, these are all sources of pension. All right, USC is a private corporation, no pension there. Okay, all right. So um, that's what this is all about. It explains this concept. Okay, so Social Security is a big income, pensions, uh, and private savings. That's who I am. All right. So I put money into my own private retirement account, okay? Um, another form of private savings um, is, you know, investing in the stock market. I can do it now so I can access it, or I can do it through a retirement account. If you do it through a retirement account, again, you're deferring your taxation on that. And if you uh, have it in a retirement account and you need to take the money out, you do pay a penalty, okay? All right. Whereas if I just invest in the stock market, I just, I can pull it out anytime, um, I will pay for any profits on that, okay, at that moment in time and turn my tax. Okay. Um, what else do I have? Okay. Um, um, my savings are not only my uh, retirement accounts, okay. Um, my, my value of my house, that is a huge asset that I can tap into at any point in time. Okay. Either I can sell it and just take the money and run, which I would never do, or I can take a loan that is leveraged against the value of the house. This is a home equity line of credit, a HELOC, um, that, um, that is useful. Um, uh, there's other ways of doing it also. You know, you, there are these annuities that we're gonna talk about, okay, that, um, that can be leveraged against 
your ig existing assets. Uh, it's not recommended to because uh, the annuities are very, very expensive. Okay, and um, so these are all things that we're going to be going into. All right, so kind of go through here, okay, and we look um, right here, and we're looking at adequacy. So this is just, you know, uh, what you need to review with your clients, okay, their expectation of income, okay. We look at some pretty amazing median values, okay, and that's because I think um, uh, uh, so much of the older generation, people like me, even more so for um, uh, maybe your grandparents, okay, my parents and things like that, they, they had such a, a large amount leveraged into their housing because they were able to get into housing early when the, ho when the value of land was really, really cheap, especially in places like New York City, um, uh, Southern California. And now the value of land has increased so much that they have a huge amount of their assets that are in their, their housing, okay? So this is what this is all about right here. Okay, and it just kind of breaks down um, in this section of the chapter uh, the different segments of the population um, that are positioned and how well they're predicting um, what's going on. Uh, is there going to be a retirement shortfall? Okay, if so, what are your strategies? Okay, sorry. Here's one strategy: is we're going to talk about delaying Social Security benefit claiming. Okay. Um, if I take my Social Security benefit at age 62, okay, we're going to go over this in more detail later on later in, in subsequent uh, chapters, then I take a 30% hit. I get 70% of what I would normally get if I, if I um, take my Social Security benefit at age 67. Okay, But you know what? Maybe I'm going to work till I'm 72. Right? Why not? If I can, if I have the job, why not? I'll be bored if I don't. Okay. So then by working until I'm 72, my Social Security benefit, I'm not going to be claiming it because I'm going to have my job income. Um, when I do claim my Social Security benefit, it will be 30% greater at age 72 than, than it would have been at age 67. So this is like kind of a no-brainer in, in a way to finance old age. All right. So um, where, what you need to do. Um, is you set up as kind of a spreadsheet, okay? And as a financial planner, this is one thing that you would do to impress your clients, okay? So let's just set up a spreadsheet and look at what your expenses are, okay? So we have home-related expenses, like things like mortgage, property taxes, okay? Food expenses, you know, um, alcohol expenses, health expenses, okay? Um, transportation, clothing, entertainment, etc. You just break it all down, and then you look at their their income, okay, their their projected income, uh, whether it be from still working, okay, or um, uh, um, things like Social Security, okay. All righty. Um, over here, when we start looking at the income and the, the composition of wealth, okay, uh, in terms of retirement preparation, right. Um, we're going to look at the different categories of wealth, all right? Um, married people have more wealth than, than single people, okay? All right. Um, we have Social Security benefit. We have a defined defined uh, benefit. This is a defined pension. Again, these are government workers. A few companies have this, okay? Um, I have my own personal retirement account benefit. That's my 401k, okay? Okay. And you choose a job that maybe has matching 401k benefits. 5% of my salary I put in to my um, 401k that I'm going to tap into when I retire. And USC matches that two to one, which is a huge benefit, huge. So you have, you have to consider that when you're looking at your total package of the job that you're applying for. Okay, these are, this is not money that... Um, that is my quote unquote salary, okay? This is extra money that USC provides for me that I get to tap into later on in my 70s, okay? All righty. Again, this goes over um, breakdowns, uh, wealthy versus the median and things like that, okay? And I'm not gonna reiterate that, but it's, it's what we do, okay? Um, <clears throat> um, again, this goes over breakdowns of the replacement rates, okay? And, and the readiness of, in terms of social security. This is the concept of delaying, okay, it's your Social Security. So you can tap into it early at 62, but you see that 30% reduction, okay, that I was talking about. 
um, the more people are working later in life okay so this is, is a breakdown of that right there okay and um, and then we look at kind of um, uh, differences in terms of households okay um, in terms of their incomes and uh, and then we can look at gender differences right here okay <clears throat> right and unfortunately women uh, have less than men okay and um, I'm not gonna read that for you again but you should kind of go over that this is exactly what I was talking about. It says called the changing pension landscape. Okay, and you're not going to get this um, defined benefit pension anymore unless you're a government worker for the most part. And what we now have is a defined contribution where I can I, I make a defined contribution of my own income to, into my future retirement. You know, we're going to talk about you guys right now. You can be doing what's called a Roth individual retirement account. It's the preferred method when you're young, when you're not making a lot of money because of the tax benefit, okay? And then later on, you'll do just a regular, regular individual um, um, uh, retirement account uh, um, investment, okay? So there's a Roth IRA and there's an IRA. We'll talk about those and the tax benefits later on, okay? All right. We do have this wealth gap, okay? Um, that's important to think about in terms of genders. All right, all right, so we're gonna scroll down here, okay? Why do you save, okay? Maintaining your lifestyle, unpredicted, unexpected medical costs. And, and again, this piggybacks on everything we've talked about in this class in terms of these chronic diseases of aging, okay? These non-communicable diseases of aging because they are not a one-time hit, but they are costs that you have to anticipate over 10, 15, 20 years of, of, of your lifespan, okay? And we're gonna talk about that in terms of the discussion. So this is an important um, uh, part of that spreadsheet that you're gonna be developing uh, when you start talking about it, okay? Um, all righty, uh, let's go down here, okay? Um, so, we're, so it's important to have this financial literacy, okay? That's going on in terms of your clients. And um, um, again, uh, you know, just the, the the concept of compound interest, okay? This is a real weak statement. You know, stock market, you know, in terms of um, uh, investing, we're going to talk about, <clears throat> you know, I have not kept my money in a savings account, in a money market account that makes no interest, okay? Money markets might make this kind of interest, but in the stock market, you know, on average, I'm making 9% on my dollar that I invest. So this is why you do it. You know, there is a risk, but it's it's a calculated risk. And you just didn't make your investments into um, mutual funds that are spread out. We'll talk all about that later on. Okay. All right. So um, so that's the, the, you know, the basis of this, art, of this article. You, it, what you do want to, to look at here is um, we're looking at, um, you know, any kind of coverage. Okay, um, and it's kind of sad when you see that um, across the board population, it hasn't changed much, that under 35% has any type of benefit going to them that is separate from Social Security. All the remaining percent out here of 65% of the population, okay, right here, their um, coverage is all Social Security. Okay, and then you see the changing landscape. So a reduction in the uh, pension or uh, the defined benefit, okay, which is in red, and an increase in defined contribution, which is what I do, where I put my money aside. And what you encourage people to do when you are a financial planner, uh, a money manager, or something like that, okay, and an account manager. All right, all right. Um, this is all about calculating where your money goes. Okay, again, I'm not going to read this for you. I'm going to whiz through this, and we're going to get here to the last um, last set of graphs right here. Okay, and uh, we're looking at single versus or, uh, um, couples, and we're looking at um, the total income. Okay, so um, uh, people are more likely to have, be generating income from the workplace and things like that. Um, selling of assets right here, okay? Um, we look at their total wealth, and you see this maintained total wealth uh, when you're a couple 
the reduction in wealth as you get older if you're single, okay? And then we look at expenditures right here on a percentile basis. Um, that you see that single people have a much greater uh, likelihood of expenditures, okay? All right, so, all right. I think I'm going to end there because that's where it ends, okay? And then what you guys need to do is come back over here, all right, and get into the discussion. Now, this right here explains the Social Security system, okay? Again, what is it all about? Social Security is an insurance policy so that I will not hopefully go broke when I get older, all right? Came from the New Deal area during the, the uh, Depression, the Great Depression that hit the world. So it's been in action forever, okay? Um, and and uh, it explains the, the concept of who, who gets paid, okay? And how it's paid right here. And then um, this is uh, about you people having a better understanding about the economics, okay, this, okay, so uh, do watch these videos. And then this right here is um, uh, an amazing website you can go to to investigate more about um, uh, Social Security, okay. I love this article right here. It is kind of long-winded, but nonetheless, you come in here and it gets into this concept of your income and balance against healthcare expenses, okay. And, um, you know, tragically, okay, we will look at looking right here. We can. This is one of the figures from the paper. Uh, we look at um, people that um, are using Medicare, okay, and what it does not cover. So you're out of pocket, not covered by Medicare spending as as a share of your average per capita Social Security income, just the Social Security, okay. And you can see that um, up to half of your Social Security income would be going towards paying of, of medical bills not covered by Medicare, which is kind of scary, all right? So we get in here. Again, this is a, a really, really cool article about the financing of old, older life and as it, re, as it relates to um, um, your, your medical costs that are not covered by Medicare, okay? So this is just another way of looking at it right here. And you can just, you know, you just read up here. This is the average out-of-pocket pocket healthcare spending by a Medicare beneficiary, out of pocket means Medicare did not cover it, all right, was 41% of the average per capita Social Security income, all right? So you get Social Security check and 41% of it goes for its paying for pills and doctor's visits and things like that, okay? And so they, they, it's all different ways of looking at it and they break it down as you get older, you know, 74 75% of your, of your Social Security income is going towards um, paying for health care costs, not covered by Medicare, which is scary, 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 scary. All right, and so then it breaks it down in terms of male and female. Women are, are worse off in this way, okay? And, uh, and then, so, so again, these are different. If you're in a, a financial analysis, an econo econ economist, this is kind of working. You're going to break it down into different subcategories. And that's what this is all about. Are you um, of, of worse health? Okay, the, the worse health, the more money that goes in. Okay, do you have impairments? Okay, in terms of your activities of daily living, more money goes in in terms of your, um, medic, your uh, Social Security income. Then you can break it down. I'm going to scroll down here. All right, now we're breaking it down in terms of um, your total income. Okay, so you see the percentiles are lower, but even then, scarily, almost 25% of your total income on average is going to be paid towards health care costs when you get older. Okay? And that, again, they break it down to a bunch of individual groups. All righty, guys. So um, real good for my financial planners, um, my economists. Okay, um, this is the real deal. And so you're going to be able to apply this knowledge of what's what to anticipate and it's all about that you're planning in terms of these this is my income on one one hand this is my these are my uh costs on the other hand and are you positioned uh so that um you're not going to become somebody that will be homeless and be on welfare all right guys take care and we'll see you next time